They say the first five seconds of every video are the most important. <coughs> Leviosa. Leviosa. Today I'm going to show you guys a card trick. This I'm calling the reverse biddle because you're doing a biddle trick, a classic trick in card magic backwards. So we're going to have a card picked. In this case, we have the uh, the Joker. The Joker seems to be the picked one. That card gets lost in the middle of the deck, never to be seen again by human eyes. And we're going to make the claim that we're going to find their card by cutting the deck. You see, we're going to try to cut the deck to where their card is. In this case, uh, right here, your card, the King of Ducks. That wasn't your, that wasn't your card. <laughs> That's okay. I'm sure I was close. I'm sure I was close. See, um, we have the uh, the two of clubs. It could have been the uh, the queen of hearts. It could have been the king of spades, and it could have been the the queen of diamonds. So one of those, one of those is definitely your card, uh, sir. Don't tell me anything. Uh, don't tell me anything. Yes, definitely this one. I'm getting a vibe towards this card right here, sir. Uh, did I remove your card? Your card's not here anymore, right? Your card's not here anymore? That's what I thought. For the first time, name your card. And the participant goes, I picked the jo the I picked the, uh, the Joker. And you go, well, that wasn't one of the cards I showed you. And you get into some sort of confrontation, eventually turning over the card and showing the fact that, well, you did get it right. You see what I mean? It's backwards. When I do in the classic way of counting off the cards and then having it appear in their hands, you can make this in their hands if you want. I'll talk about that later. But uh, just a cool trick. Even cooler if you join the Pig Cake Magic Academy. $5 a month gets you access to over 1,200 videos going over everything you need to become the best magician you can be. Just look at that running list of things that you get access to the moment you sign up for less than the price of a White Claw beverage. And you're also going to need the Pig Cake Magic Academy if you want to have a more thorough knowledge as to the actual slights and techniques that I'm going to go over in this video. You see that it's win-win. You join the academy, you help me out, but more importantly, you're helping yourself out. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to spread our favorite deck of upcoming playing cards, the missing piece deck, and we're going to have the participants select any card as they ask you, hey, when is that deck coming out? And you go relatively soon. Make sure to keep an eye on social media for it. Now, in this case, let's say they pick the seven of clubs. What's going to happen here is you're going to spread through the cards and you're going to eyeball two cards and separate it from the rest of the spread. I'm just doing this by spreading and then keeping my fingers separate from this card apart from my bottom fingers that are holding those two cards in place. When I take the participant's card back, I'm just simply going to add these two cards on top. So I'm going to keep this face up for the sake of explanation. I'm going to add these two cards on top, square up the cards, but keep a pinky break separating them. You see what I mean by learning all the terms if you joined the Pig Cake Magic Academy? You will know what a pinky break is if you joined the Academy or if you were a virgin and actually was interested in card magic and knew what a pinky break was, but you should still join the Academy. And here you're going to make a claim to the participant that you're going to cut to their card. So you're going to cut to your pinky break and drop these cards on the table. At this point, you're going to turn this card face up and tell the participant, well, your card, the seven of hearts. And they go, no. And you go, sure, sure, wait, hold up. No, nah, uh, I think I was close. I think I was relatively close here. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to spread the cards and get a pinky break underneath four cards from the top of the deck. So at this point, I'm just going to take these cards and turn them face up and drop them on the table. But what this break is going to allow you to do is that in a moment, you're going to need to do a double lift on their card and you're going to drop that double on the table. And this is going to help you out in that particular endeavor. So you're going to take this card, turn it face up. The way that I'm doing that is by running my thumb down the length of the deck and dropping it on the table, just like I drop your mom on the table sexually. At this point, I'm going to do the exact same thing with the next card as I drop that on the table. And then here, remember, this card is going to be face down. I'm going to take these two cards as one and do the exact same thing. Now you could substitute any double lift that you know and drop these cards on the table, but I like this move because it just looks like the card is single. And all you're going to do at this point is drop those two cards as one on the table. You're trying for the cards not to separate. Sometimes they might separate a little bit. That's tolerable because it camouflages with the card underneath, but you don't want it to spread completely. And now we're just going to repeat this action two more times without doing a double lift. So we're going to take another card and drop it and then take another card and drop it as well. So now you have a packet of apparently five cards on the table. Really, you have six cards where the third card is their card, but they don't know that. So far, they haven't seen their card. So they think that this trick has gone completely wrong. You can now regroup the cards. And here you're going to mention to the participant, you don't want them to say a word, but you're going to find their card among this packet of cut cards. And all you're going to do here is you're going to spread through five cards while keeping these last two together. 
So their card is going to be the third one from the top of the deck, in this case, the seven of clubs. So you're going to spread one, two, three, four, and then the last one you're holding together as one. At this point, you're going to pretend like you're going through some sort of process. You're going to take this card and stick it out and go, great, I think this one's yours. Do me a favor, hold it in your hand. I don't want you to peek yet. And you could have the participant hold this in their hand as you now take these cards and turn them face up. Now you could ask the participant, do you see your card in here? They're going to go, no, I don't see my card. So you could pretend now that, well, their card is gone, that you were correct because you managed to take their card out from this small pile of five. So you go, great. So that means that your card was the one that you're holding. For the first time, name the card that you picked, sir. And in this case, they're going to name the seven of clubs. And you go, but that wasn't, um, that wasn't in the pile though. And you could play this up however it is you want, but ultimately you could have them turn over the card in their hand and it happens to be bang on their card. Oh boy, how hot is that, my friend? Super simple, it's the reverse biddle trick, right? It still ends up in their hand because you just placed the card in their hand and they could have the impact of going, whoa, that is my card, even though they thought that you were completely wrong. I love these tricks because you go and you hook them. They think you're wrong and then ultimately look what ends up happening. You just reel them in, you reel them into your little trap and then you surprise them by making the trick right again. These cards are gonna be available relatively soon. I finished the video that I was working on them for and that should hopefully be making its way when I have the actual Kickstarter drafted completely. So I'm working on that. Last pictures and little things to make sure that people get every single little detail of these cards coming your way. So make sure to look out for that on my Instagram, pickcake 69 and here on YouTube so that you could uh, know when you're gonna get your dirty little hands on the missing piece deck of playing cards. As far as some advice at the end of the video, um, boy, a chicken, chicken is good. I've seen, uh, I've seen it a lot recently, a lot of videos on social media of people washing their chicken. You don't wanna wash your chicken. Uh, you wanna cook it to the sufficient temperature, making sure that you've killed all the salmonella that the chicken could potentially possess. Uh, you don't wanna use soap, on chicken and you want to make sure that anything that your chicken your raw chicken comes in contact with you clean thoroughly it's a very simple fact i don't know why i have to say this but uh, i've seen this as uh, as a way of preparing chicken that you just put it in the sink you put some dawn dish soap on it and you rub it now some have been memes and jokes but some have been dead serious so uh just some advice from a person with a, a brain don't wash uh your chicken with soap or don't wash it, don't rub with water, are you serious? Just put it on the pan, prepare it how you want, and make sure that it reaches the appropriate temperature. When I see you again, 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 when I see you again,